And so every day there are more facts that are coming out about the shooting. Now, we sort of know what we know at this point until a full investigation is undergone. But here is a fact that should matter to you. When it comes to how Americans feel about what happened in Parkland and who they blame about what happened in Parkland, it is not the NRA. It is not law-abiding gun owners. So Rasmussen had a, a poll yesterday, a new survey, and it suggests, and this is after the CNN propaganda town hall, the, the two minutes hate on CNN. Here's what Rasmussen reports, quote, 54% of American adults believe the failure of government agencies to respond to numerous warning signs from the prospective killer is more to blame for the mass shooting. Only 33% attribute the deaths more to a lack of adequate gun control. 11% opt for something else. Among Americans who have elementary children, uh, elementary school children or secondary school age children, 61% think the government is more to blame. Just 23% of those adults felt a lack of adequate gun control. 41% of respondents, by the way, say that they opt for stricter gun control. 40% say more action is needed to treat mental health issues. Only 50% of Democrats actually said that a lack of gun control was the real problem here. All of which is to say, whenever you see polls, there's some polls out today suggesting that even among Republicans, support for gun control is rising. You need to take all of that with a grain of salt because that's like asking Americans, as I've said in the past, it's like asking Americans, are you for less government spending? The answer is always yes, but then you say, okay, what do you wanna see cut? And suddenly Americans run for the hills. Well, the same thing is true with regard to gun control. People say, are you for more gun control? Most people go, yeah, sounds good, why not? Keeps bad guns out of the hands of bad people. And then when you say, okay, well, that's gonna mean we're gonna have to ban all the rifles. Then all the Americans say, well, no, we're not gonna do that. Then the polls suddenly shift. So specifics are very different from general propositions that are put forward in these polling numbers, all of which goes to show you that the media's attempt to paint this as the, the shifting point on gun control, it's just not true. It's just not correct. And the fact is that even Democrats are split on this. They don't wanna talk about it, but they are. And that news is obvious since the Huffington Post reported yesterday morning that after the Las Vegas massacre, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee's regional press secretary, Evan Lukaski, actually wrote to candidates in the Northeast not to politicize the shooting. He wrote, quote, teams, last night's shooting will dominate the news today and will garner serious coverage the rest of the week. You and your candidate will be understandably outraged and upset, as will your community. However, do not politicize it today. Now, Lukaski was right. Politicizing shootings in the aftermath of shootings is bad form. And it's gotten even worse over the past week and a half and the, all the media reported this was just a grassroots movement that was happening on gun control. And now it turns out that the so-called March for Our Lives that's happening in Washington, D.C. on March 24th, at which some of the student witnesses and student survivors at Parkland are going to be the, the featured speakers, that this is now being backed by Planned Parenthood. It's being backed by Black Lives Matter. It's being backed by MoveOn.org. It's being backed by every town for gun safety. So all of these organized leftist movements are now getting behind these kids and astroturfing what is going to be a very large march in Washington, D.C. that results in virtually nothing. And the reason it's going to result in virtually nothing is, again, because the American people do not support this. The American people look at what happened in Parkland, and what they see is a failure of law enforcement, which is why yesterday a North Texas sheriff put out a notice that got him wide acclaim. He, uh, the, the Denton County Sheriff Tracy Murphy uh, told his deputies, quote, with the recent tragedy in Florida, I wanted to make my, clear my policy on responding to an active shooter. All commission deputies, if you respond to an active shooter, you are expected to take immediate action. We do not stage and wait for SWAT. We do not cover in a parking lot. We do not wait for another agency. We go in and do our duty. We go in to engage and stop the shooter and save lives. If for any reason you feel you cannot follow this directive, please inform your supervisor and we will work to get you reassigned. Okay, this is the way that most Americans feel about what the authorities ought to be doing, even though the left wants to suggest that this was not a failure of authority. The left would prefer to jump into the debate on this, on this moralistic level. The left would prefer to suggest that there's a moral failure, failure that's taking part on the place of those who do not support widespread gun control. And that, of course, is not true. Marco Rubio is one of the people who's been hit hardest from that, Senator Rubio from Florida. You remember he was at that town hall, Two Minutes Hate, on CNN, and he was shellacked by a bunch of the students, one of the students even comparing him to the mass shooter himself. Rubio put out a tweet today that I think sums up the state of our gun control debate. He said, quote, the debate after Parkland reminds us, we the people don't really like each other very much. We smear those who refuse to agree with us. We claim a Judeo-Christian heritage, but celebrate arrogance and boasting. And worst of all, we have infected the next generation with the same disease. Now he's getting ratioed, right? There are a bunch of people on the left who didn't like that he said this. There are a bunch of people who thought, oh, it's just terrible that he would say something like this, but he's 100% correct. The fact is that the left has turned this into a referendum on the moral character of people who disagree with them. And most Americans are not up for that. Most Americans are not interested in castigating their fellow Americans as murderers and murderer supporters, which is why it's really fascinating 
There have been a bunch of corporations that have disassociated from the NRA over the last week. There was a poll out today from Morning Consult that showed every single corporation, every single corporation that disassociated from the NRA in the aftermath of this gun control debate has been losing, losing public support. Because they'll gain four or five points in public support from Democrats, they'll lose 60% of public support from Republicans who feel like they're under attack. And the reason Republicans feel like they're under attack is because they are under attack. Okay, the left, they say they're not for removing Second Amendment rights, that they only want rational, reasonable gun controls. That's just not true. They want to remove semi-automatic weapons from every person in the United States if they could have their way. That is the end goal. They won't be honest about it, many members of the left, but this is actually what they want. And you can see it in the arguments that they're making. So today, the New York Times has a full piece about how the AR-15 is essentially military technology in the hands of civilians. Well, that's true of any semi-automatic rifle. They say, well, look at the AR-15, look at its muzzle velocity. It has yes, 3,000 feet per second muzzle velocity. This is true of any 223 or 5.56 millimeter ammo firing rifle. The muzzle velocity on those rifles is very high. It always has been. It will continue to be. The notion that it's just military technology in the hands of civilians Again, every rifle then is military technology in the hands of civilians because every rifle was at some point military technology in the hands of civilians. Even bolt action rifles were military technology in the hands of civilians. This argument is akin to saying that the engine in your car is just like the engines in the cars of people in the military. Okay, that's true, but it doesn't take you very far. And when people on the left rip on the AR-15 and suggest the AR-15 is the root of all evil, this just demonstrates complete lack of gun knowledge. There are a thousand types of the AR-15. There are many, many different types of semi-automatic rifle that fire at similar velocity with similar caliber with similar, similar caliber ammunition. Banning the AR-15 or the branded AR-15 would do nothing to stop the spread of rifles, and it would do nothing to stop the, the actual problem of school shootings. By the way, there's a study out today showing that school shootings have actually been declining in recent years. Not increasing, declining. We're not allowed to talk about these statistics, of course, because to do so is seen as somehow undermining the case in favor of pushing against school shootings. But the reality is that just as gun violence in the United States has declined markedly from its highs in 1992, 1993, school shootings have been declining in recent years pretty rapidly. That doesn't mean that what happened in Parkland isn't tragic and horrible and an and act of evil. It does mean that we ought to take a look at the measures that we are purporting to push and compare those to the rights that we are attempting to infringe. And what rights are we attempting to infringe? Well, the answer is all semi-automatic rifles. So, Ari Melber made this case on MSNBC. He's given a lot of credit for the left from this because Ari Melber is a lawyer, um, but he does really bad legal analysis here, and I will explain why. He explains the Second Amendment, in his view, does not protect AR-15s. Uh, his logic here makes no sense. The Second Amendment does not apply to AR-15s. It does not apply to assault-style weapons. It never has. Congress may legally ban those weapons without touching the Second Amendment. That's a legal fact. But it's hard for many politicians to defend. That is not a legal fact. That is not a legal fact. Okay, what he says there, if you go back to the, the screen where he puts up some text on the screen, the screen that he says there, well, what he says is that the Supreme Court has never ruled that AR-15s are protected by the Second Amendment. Well, that does not mean that there is no right to an AR-15. The Supreme Court has never actually ruled on whether Twitter is protected by the First Amendment because that's never come up before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court rejects certiorari on cases all the time. Doesn't mean that the right doesn't exist. This is legally illiterate. Melber makes the case, makes this argument, that because the Supreme Court has rejected certiorari, certiorari is an appeal. So the way it works is that you have a case, it goes to a district court judge. That is then appealed up to a circuit court judge, it goes to the circuit court of appeals, and then finally it's appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court. What is sent to the Supreme Court is something called a writ of certiorari, which is essentially a petition asking that the Supreme Court take up the case. Now, the Supreme Court will reject writs of certiorari for a variety of reasons. Some of those reasons include the fact they agree with the, the Court of Appeals. Sometimes they say the case isn't ripe, because it's a very common claim that a case has not actually reaped ripe, has not reached ripeness because there are a bunch of other circuit courts that have not ruled on the case. There are cases where they say that it's not just an issue of law they want to take up. There are a million reasons to reject, to reject writs of certiorari, and it is also true that none of the cases that have been brought before the Supreme Court specifically deal with AR-15s because there's not a state in the country that has attempted to actually ban AR-15s. Even in California, there's only recently an attempt to quasi-ban AR-15s, but even that ban is not supremely clear. And certainly confiscation of AR-15s has never been tried. And if it were to go up to the Supreme Court, there's a very good shot that it would be shot down. But Melber suggests, and this is actually a really dangerous constitutional point, that Melbourne is making, because it essentially says that if the Supreme Court has not ruled on an issue, you don't have a right to it. 
So if the Supreme Court hasn't ruled on whether Twitter is protected free speech, then that means that you don't have a right to it. Now, you see, Mel Melbourne would never agree to the same logic with regard to, say, same-sex marriage before Obergefell, right? So before Obergefell, the Supreme Court rejected same-sex marriage cases over and over and over, rejected a bunch of writs of certiorari. And would Ari Melber have said there is no right to same-sex marriage at that time? No, of course he wouldn't have said that. He would have said, in my view, there's a right to same-sex marriage. It's inherent in the text of the Constitution. And just because the Supreme Court has not accepted the case yet doesn't mean the right doesn't exist. In fact, the reality is that under the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, the Constitution explicitly states that rights that are not overtly stated in the Constitution of the United States itself are still rights that are held by the people. In other words, the Bill of Rights is not meant to be a comprehensive charter of rights. Is meant to point out some of the most specific rights that it wants protected from the federal government, but that does not mean that there are other rights that don't exist. All other rights don't exist. Beyond which, the Second Amendment is pretty clear about what it means. When it says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the preservation of a free state, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, it's specifically talking about civilians having access to guns that they can then use when they go into the militia. At the time, these were military light weapons, right? I mean, these were rifles, these were muskets, and that same principle carries forward. So what Melber is saying here makes no sense on a legal level. But here's the more important point. When Ari Melber says he wants to ban an AR-15, when the New York Times points out the AR-15, that means they want to ban every semi-automatic rifle in the United States because there is no serious distinction between a Bushmaster 223 and an AR-15. There is no significant distinction between, uh, between you know, very, a Springfield rifle and, and an AR-15. Yeah, they, they, there are a thousand types of rifle, all of which fire the same sort of caliber ammunition. And just because some look scarier than others doesn't mean that they are less scary than others, which is why when you take a course in guns, the very first thing they say is that, of course, you don't fire it anywhere near a person. Of course, you don't fire it at something you're not willing to destroy. Rifles are meant to do damage. Rifles are meant to kill things. Rifles are meant to destroy things. They're meant to kill people, presumably people who are bad who come into your home. But a rifle... You know, as a tool of killing, that, that does not mean that a rifle itself is so inherently dangerous that we have to ban all of them. The, this one-to-one -one correlation the left attempts to draw between the number of guns in a particular society and the level of murder in a particular society just does not hold. And that's particularly true for rifles. The, the, more people are killed by hands and fists every year in the United States than are killed by rifles in the United States. And gun ownership you know, owned by a civilian population generally is not a good proxy for crime rate. Gun ownership rates in places like Vermont are extraordinarily high. Vermont has an extraordinarily low crime rate. The same thing is true in New Hampshire. And if you go to other states, some, some places, Louisiana, there's very high gun ownership rate. There's very high crime rate. Now, important to note, most of that crime is not taking place in the boonies. Most of that crime is taking place in the major cities, most of which have actual gun control regulations on the books, and most of which are governed by Democrats. All of which is to say that the, the simplistic attempt to draw a, 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 a point of, of concurrence between a, a, a cross point of data between gun ownership and, and murder, that doesn't really hold. It doesn't really hold. It doesn't even hold in Europe, by the way, where Norway has many more guns per civilian than Britain does, and Britain has, a, has twice as bad a murder rate. So these, these things just, the, the statistics just do not hold for any of this.